dietitians at thekidneyrd.com. But today and this whole week, we've been talking about oxalate management and uh, polycystic kidney disease. This is a new emerging strategy for polycystic kidney disease, something that we feel is uh, really important. And one of the pieces that people tend to get wrong, a ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting, super hot as far as a treatment for polycystic kidney disease. And sometimes the part about oxalates really gets left out. So five really simple management tips for oxalates that you can use if you have polycystic kidney disease. You don't want to leave these out. You don't want to forget these. So number one is plenty of fluid intake. So whether or not you have chronic kidney disease or polycystic kidney disease, unless you specifically know that you have a fluid restriction, having plenty of fluid intake is really, really important. Um, when it comes to oxalate management, this is an absolutely critical issue because it dilutes the urine and prevents it from forming calcium oxalate crystals. So fluid intake is a great and really important piece that you need to know about. So number two is add some lemon to your water. Get some lemon water in. Lemon is a good source of citrate and citrate is an, uh, a nutrient that can help um, so that these calcium oxalate crystals don't form in the urine. So we have a lot of our clients use lemon water throughout the day. Um, if you're going to do it every single day, all the time, Side tip, use a straw because after a while the acid can kind of bother your lips a little bit, get a canker sore. So uh, number three is know some of your high oxalate foods, especially the really big ones, and just make some easy swaps. So for example, spinach is so high in oxalates, very, very, very high, um, and it's very easy to swap out romaine lettuce um, instead of spinach or kale, which is a low oxalate food as well in recipes and still get a very good flavor profile but not get the oxalate load so if you have polycystic kidney disease spinach is something that i i do have my clients take completely out of their diet it's such an easy swap with different things um so spinach is one almonds is another very very heavy oxalate food that's another really easy one to swap we swap out with uh, macadamia nuts and pecans are probably our two most common ones. Some walnuts, cashews, peanuts tend to also be a little bit higher in oxalates. So they have to fit in with a very personalized uh, portion. So that's number three. Number four is understanding a little bit about the calcium sources in your diet. So calcium binds with oxalate in the gut and also some evidence that maybe magnesium does too. So having some sort of calcium source with your heaviest oxalate mills can be really helpful. That can happen in a couple different ways, whether it's a food source of calcium, um, or in some cases we'll use a, a calcium citrate supplement. However, um, we are pretty careful about who is using calcium supplements. They have some other uh, side effects that we don't like as far as car cardiovascular disease. And so that's something that you should work with a professional on if you're going to add a calcium supplement in. Number five is probably the most important is I really feel like understanding oxalate management with a one-to-one -one session with a dietitian who understands oxalate management can be absolutely critical and can be so, so helpful for everybody. Um, so I highly recommend reach out to our team or find a dietitian who's well-versed in oxalate management. Usually they have experience with kidney stones, especially, and sit down for a session and kind of hammer out the different pieces. Uh, that can be very, very helpful and very important for a lot of people. Um, and then the other thing that I'll just put as a side note and a shout out to one of our uh, colleagues on the internet. She's actually a nurse. Her name is Jill Harris, but she has a really, really good um, oxalate, free oxalate download on her uh, website that has a uh, list that can, you know, categorizes foods from high to low with oxalates. And we really like to refer clients to that and utilize that. It's a really, really good resource. She specializes in kidney stones, but her oxalate resource is out of this world. So highly recommend that as well as a resource. Anyways, so in summary, oxalate management tips, plenty of fluid, number one, use some lemon water, um, watch out for some high oxalate foods, two big ones, spinach and um, spinach.
spinach and almonds are some that we eliminate. Uh, number four, learn how to use calcium appropriately. Some people use a little bit of a uh, dairy product, maybe goat cheese with their, uh, with their foods. You want to make sure and customize this with a dietitian because for later stages of kidney disease, dairy may not be appropriate. And then number five, work with the dietitian. That, that is where there's so much value. They can sort through the pieces, make sure that it's personalized for you and that you're absolutely crystal clear on what you need to do. Um, I hope that is helpful today. You can visit us at thekidneyrd.com. Our guarantee is that all of our clients are able to leave um, their sessions with their sessions, their packages, working with us with a hundred with clarity about what to do. They know exactly what to do. They have a plan. Um, and then uh, you can follow us at thekidneyrd.com, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we're on all of those platforms. Uh, and if you really love the nitty gritty parts, the fine tuning of um, renal nutrition to preserve kidney function, you can join our, our Facebook group, which is Precision Kidney Nutrition, where we get into details for those people that really want to get into details and know all of the ways they can leverage and preserve kidney function. Anyways, that's all for now, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.